including uh, valedictorian session. And I request all of you to be present uh, in that. And uh, last announcement, Chamber has uh, conducting a sports event on next Sunday at 1st February at Andheri Sports Complex. And there, badminton, chess, table tennis, and carrom. These four <coughs> events are there. So those who want to take participation in that, participate in that, can enroll themselves outside the auditorium with Hitesh or maybe with uh, Suresh. The charges are rupees 100 plus service tax for a single event. Now coming to the session. Today, the last session is on the case studies and the different provisions of the service tax except place of provision, point of taxation and real estate. And the paper writer is C.S.S. Gupta. He is a well-known personality. Most of us who are present here have learned service tax by reading his book. Coming to the case studies, case studies are very, uh, very good. Case studies are prepared by him. All case studies are live case studies covering various topics, Senvet, reverse charge mechanism, accessibility, 66F, some aspect of declared service, negative list, mega exemption. So various things that from the service tax law has been covered in the case study. Now starting, before starting the session, I request Ketan Mamaniya to kindly introduce today's <coughs> speaker. Thank you, Marithai. Even if introduction is given in the public, it's great uh, pleasure to introduce the F.A. Gupta. The Turendra F. Gupta is not only a charter accountant, he is also a boss accountant and company secretary. He is a rank holder in the inter and final board examination in charter accountancy and cost accountancy. He has been practicing in the industry for the six years. Then after he started his own practice, specialized in central exercise, custom, service check, active policy, having a more than 25 years of the experience specialized in indirect tax. He is also author of the book Service Tax, How to Meet Obligation, which is being published by the Techman. Friend, as you know, his regular contributions to articles to various professional journals has been faculty members of the seminar, conference, refresher course, lecture organized by the Law Institute, MCA, MCS, and other organized body. He also awarded a lot of the awards and scholarships such as Signum Golden Jubilee Scholarship, JRD Tata Monia Scholarship, Sir Ibrahim Rahim Scholarship, Maharaja Talakti of Bhavnagar Scholarship, Narthi Mohjin Scholarship, Institute of Cost Accountant and Cash Price and the other various scholarships he has got. Friend, other than professional achievement, he is also doing various charitable activities and connected with various trusts as a trustee and active manager such as the Tunkal, Quenberg, Mangesh, Vipas Mandal, and Paras Vikas, Pratipa, and Pudavika Vikram Kuru. With this brief introduction, I request you to welcome the Surinder Gupta with a round of applause. I As a mark of the love and affection, I request our President Paras Tawla to present a moment to Patrick Gupta.
Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Parish Sala, Ketan Mamaniya, Madish, my friend, and Ladesh Sheet. And friends, we always try to interpret the law, which is framed by the government. Actually, when I was going through various groups, thought came to my mind, ultimately what is interpretation? What is the interpretation which we are trying to find out? And how much deep we can think into that? In our time, we have learned alphabet, A, A, E, E, all that. Some young people are here, young faces are here. They are not A, B, C. Have you ever thought why A is put in this fashion? A has three values, one and middle. What was be the thinking behind the person who has formulated the alphabets? Why A was made in like this shape? A was made there. If you try to think on those fashions, you can really capture the law framer's mind as to why he made this law. What was necessary for him to provide this? Because well, ultimately, no doubt, it's a taxation collection is made. But he has something in his mind when he writes <coughs> an interpretation which can understand the law made. Up. Resolves a lot of problems. Although always courts have held that the plain language used in the sections are the best guide because everybody moves because of that. But every time, I, as we always say, try to understand why he has made this law, then possibly you will be in a better position to understand and interpret. Undoubtedly, when so many persons are sitting in a group, in our office also, there are bound to be difference of opinion. There is nothing wrong in it. Even judges of Supreme Court have difference of opinion. But then you have should have your own logic. And that's why I was very pleased when I saw some of the group members. Okay, this somebody said this service is classified under cargo handling. Alright, you are saying cargo handling, please tell why. Some say service, service, classroom, car, and courier service. No doubt. You can have your own views. But what is the logic behind which you are going? And 
and the logic is more relevant than the final one. How far your views will be accepted in the court of law? Nobody can today estimate and tell the certainty. You must have read uh, one of the incidents. I think Chief Justice Arvi Dayal or somebody was there. When he was a Chief Justice, he went to function of children. His grandson took him to the function in the school. And one of the children asked him in a question and session. Sir, you are Chief Justice of India. Are you trying to tell us you are infallible? Are you trying to? Infallible. You can't make errors. Okay. <coughs> the judgment which you give is perfect. And reply was, he said, no. We are all human beings. To earth is also human. But Article 141 gives us the power to declare law. So whatever we think is to be understood in that fashion by the citizens of the country. So why one can very well have a difference of opinion and which the various questions and answers will show that. Now these factors need to be seen. Because very often what we see that people have something in their view but when it comes to develop a logic behind it that people are not willing to <coughs> make that much effort. I am not saying people don't have a brain but that much effort is not made. To look for various places as to what I think, whatever you think. How can I prove it to be correct? What is the logic? Because well, ultimately everything acts on the basis. With that we will mind if you make an interpretation, case studies and all. It's easier to solve it. With this now we will go to one by one. This slide is made. You are given questions. You all have to be, you have deliberated very well. The provisions which are required to be are to answer or to come to a certain <coughs> conclusion are uh, given in this representation. The first question. Decided to provide transportation service for transportation employment. <coughs> now if you look at the history of segment credit. 2004, first time the credit of service tax was allowed to a manufacturer and credit of input was allowed to a input and capital was allowed to a service provider. At that time there were no restrictions. The exclusion clause was not introduced. In 2004 when you look at the definition of input service, this was the definition prior to 1st April 2011. And there was no exclusion clause <coughs> in this. As the time went on, the board, you see, this is how the problem starts creating. The board was always of the opinion that services which are for personal consumption and construction should not be allowed as credit. The, so they went on, I mean they went on issuing show cause notices and all that. And in 2011, Mr. V.K. Gauk said we will put in the rule itself. We will not give a show cause notice, but we will put in the rule itself that should, it should be disallowed. So the basic thrust of Amending the rule. Now here if you look at this, there is no exclusion clause. And then after that, the exclusion clause is come. The first question relates to the exclusion clause. The 
One question therefore becomes clear that prior to first upper rule of level there was an exclusion clause. And if you look at the definition of input surface, this definition main portion after first up to 11 and after, uh, before first up to 11 has remained more or less same, except the word activity related business has been excluded from the uh, inclusive part of the definition. Now the question that comes up is what is the consequence of excluding activities related to business? <coughs> the first principle of interpretation would be that what can be excluded from this clause is what is included above. If something is not included above, it can't be excluded. <coughs> so which means the services which even if it relates to personal consumption are included in the upper part of the definition of input service. Am I clear? Which means these definitions, this and this portion includes your medical claim, your transportation and employee, your uh, canteen services, all those things. And only when this includes this, that you can exclude from the exclusion clause. That is also one of the major problems. It is prior to first of 2011, credit of all this should be allowed. You don't have to much argue because if it is not excluded, if it is not included inside, then it can't be excluded. Now the next question comes up, what happens after first of 2011? And we are on the last clause, <coughs> C. Such as those provided in relation to outdoor catering, beauty treatment, health services, <coughs> plastic, membership of a club, health fitness center, life insurance, so and so As an example, they have given it to some of the services. The question in our case study is whether the transportation employee will constitute the personal consumption. One, one group has also posed what is the difference in renting and transportation of employees, transportation of passengers. <laughs> See, in case of transportation of passengers, the conveyance in which you are being transported does not remain under your control. You have a fixed destination, for example, you are traveling from, say, Bombay Central to Jammu. The train has a fixed route. You can't ask the train to stop at a particular place because the train is not under your control. <coughs> they are carrying you from one place to another place at a fixed route, fixed destination, there may be fixed scheduling will be there. But in case of renting, when you book a car, you can ask them to stop anywhere, have the snacks anywhere with whatever you like, go to washroom, relax. That the conveyance which is in which you are transporting, which you are going, remains under your control. That's the basic difference between transportation of employee, transportation of passenger, and the renting of the city. So you will decide based on the terms whether the particular item is under your control or not. Then the next question comes up, we are more concerned with which is provided in relation to personal consumption, primarily for personal consumption or use of any The basic fact is, how do you determine this? That is a basic fundamental issue, which I think group has not answered. Anybody would like to venture this? See, once you decide what is the criteria to determine that, then it becomes very easy. Whether you have a medical claim, whether you have outdoor catering, you have transportation and employee, you have beauty treatment, health services, all this is then if it's for a personal consumption. For example, beauty treatment. A actor or actress going for a beauty treatment personal, personally. That will be for personal consumption. But suppose before she is to be brought into a TV show, 
he or she has to undergo a makeup. Because otherwise, वो लोग की नहीं दिखेगा जो देखना चाहिए. That is not for personal consumption. That one is meant to bring a presentable condition in the before the show. So the question that comes up is, what is the criteria we fix up for the purpose of determining determining this personal consumption? And there, CBC has given a guide. See, on the same line, this is a part extract of a circular. A service meant primarily for personal consumption of employee will not constitute an input service. A list of specific services has also been given by example. The most of these services constitute a part of cost to the company package of employee. This is the criteria. When a person negotiates with the employer at the time of employment, what does he expect? What he asks for a remuneration. What does the remuneration include? See, if you give him a fixed salary of one lakh, that is given for his personal consumption. <coughs> employer director doesn't say, out of one lakh, you spent ten thousand on T-shirt. Two thousand on the food and this thing, one thousand you go for a movie. It doesn't say anything because that amount is for your personal. So anything which constitute the part is for personal consumption. The other criteria can be suppose the employer says, "Sir, I will give you food during lunch time, and I will deduct. I will in lieu of food." You are you assume that I give you five thousand rupees. Employee says, "Sir, I don't want food. My wife cooks very well. I will bring lunch from my house, and you pay me five thousand rupees." Because if a value is kept to any of the services which is given for a personal consumption, then he will have an option. Transportation and employee. The female can say, "My husband is working there nearby. He owns a car. He will come every day. I don't need your transportation employee. In lieu of this, you pay me back whatever that you are putting my CPC." Therefore, this criteria is the basis for determining whether the service can be considered for personal consumption or not. And hence. What we need to see in the first question is whether, when you transport an employee, whether the persons who are transported have they been given CTC considering the cost to them. If the employer says, "All right, you are paying so much. In addition to this, I will also give you a transport facility," he is obviously giving for business purpose. He is not considering as part of your consumption. That's the criteria. Therefore, I am coming again and again that why you decide these factors. I will mean, be explaining this more in the details in other time questions also. Try to understand what is the criteria you are fixing for each of the jargons which are being used in the uh, statute, and that that we argued out in the Hindustan Bhopala. Here also there was a catering services which did not form part of the value of CTC, and that rather allowed it. When the government has specifically used the word such as used primarily for personal use or consumption of an employee, the same has to be given due effect. In the present case, the outdoor catering services used in relation to business activity of the appellant, and the services used by all employees, and the revenue has not diverted the contents of the appellant, that the cost of these input services. Form part of the cost of my product. I also find the services covered in the clause B of the definition are equivalent to the value of separate trade without any such qualification for the services. While issuing the budget clarification, subsequent services clarified what is not eligible in that service which is meant for personal use of consumption employee or the cost of the insurance part of service employee as a cost to the company. In the present case, the cost of the services is actually borne by the company, not by the employee. 
Meaning, meaning they are not reducting, they are not considering your part of your salary. <clears throat> that is the criteria which you must take up. So when you ask the client that look, this grade is available or not, you have to first ask the employment letter and see whether the employment letter says you will be provided food also. We are not interested to know his salary and all. It's a good question of that. But what we are interested to know is this. Okay. If you have any questions, because I have limited time given, but let me see. Now, credit is available subject to these conditions. You need to explore this possibility and then see. <coughs> Credit is available, you need to look at the employment letter, whether the transport cost of employee is included part of CPC or not. That was the behind the back that was in my mind when we framed this question. So, there was a debate whether it is a renting of motor vehicle or it is a transportation. That I already explained. It's a renting, it's not transportation because the vehicle at that time remains in the your control and this. You ask him to stop at every place in the world. <laughs> so, can you examine the renting of a motor vehicle where the capital goes to the hands of the other That? Okay. Sir, what I request is to all of them. We have already discussed all the issues in detail in the groups. Let paper writer give his answer. If time be permit hmm. at the end, then we can. Otherwise, I say. Otherwise, I say. <laughs> Subject to all <laughs> Here, of course, most of the people have come to a target in second work. The <clears throat> point which was uh, thought to be derived is that when you read a judgment, try to read that what is the service. And here, the, the William is the Kerala healthcare judgment. Kerala healthcare. The, the activity was procurement of order. The person was procuring the order and the High Court has felt that the services provided by commission agent <coughs> is not a sales promotion services. And while realizing this, Therefore, they held it not to be taxable. They relied upon the judgment of income tax judgment. If I just show that. Commission of Income Tax versus Mohammad Ishka Mohabulam, 32 IPR, so and so, division bench of interpretation. See, this is how misinterpretation takes place in the various places. What was the fact in this case of income tax? was never explained to High Court. And the Income Tax Act, if you know, there used to be 37.3a, section 37.3a, which disallowed the expenses on publicity, sales promotion, other, to the extent of 20% of the disallowance. I mean, those who are quite new may not know, this is a very old uh, provision. Because Mrs. Gandhi at that time felt that people are spending too much money on the sales promotion, introduction of the product, they are holding seminars in five-star hotels and lavishly uh, drinking, eating and all that. So she said 20 percent of the sales promotion expenses. In that, the question came up whether the commission agent services shall be considered sales promotion expenses. And even the commission agent services, uh, expenses to be disallowed. So you have 1 crore rupees towards the promotion of holding 5 star meeting and all that. And you have 2 crore rupees for commission agent, commission paid to the agent for procurement of order. And there seems to be issued a circular. Look, commission agent service is essential for a business. It is not what we are trying to disallow is the extravagant expenditure incurred on the sales promotion. 
it is not an extravagant expense, it is a requirement of a business to appoint a commission agent. And therefore, that commission agent services cannot be considered as a sales promotion service. Is it clear to everybody? Yes. yes. And that is how the circular is got it. We have got a reproduction here. Ah, this is the CBD circular. This is right. In order to place a curve on extravagant and socially wasteful expenditure and publicity and sales promotion at the cost of exchequer, the finance act is inserted a new subsection 33A in section 37 of the income tax act for disallowance of a part of the expenditure and computation of the taxable profit. That is the main English, which is the basis of that MP High Court judgment. In the very same circular, we clarified that. As the term publicity and sales promotion have a wide amplitude, expenditure incurred by taxpayer, fashion shows, beauty contest, consumer contest, consumer gift offer, and free samples or gifts will fall in the ambit of section so and so. In the light of this, sorry, that particular thing is not reproduced, they have further gone to say the sales commission agent service is essential for running a business. Now, you if that circular is shown, what is essential for running a business cannot be disallowed as a credit. So, in the context of 37.3a, they also, CBDT also agree, it is essential to have the commission agent for the purpose of selling the product. They said it is not a wasteful expenditure. So, in that context, they said it is not a sales promotion expense. And that has been taken as a basis for disallowing the credit. You can understand how much uh, wrong it has been done. But law is law, you have to obey that. And until it is uh, reversed by Supreme Court, the question that comes up is now if you have a factory in Gujarat, jurisdiction of Gujarat, you are making it soon. With this six months uh, picture coming into picture, what do you advise the client? Because you ask him to take the credit, immediately show cause notice comes, penalty, show cause, then our legal expense starts. They buy a hotel with 13th birthday. And if you don't ask him to take the credit, then we have six months bar to apply. That after Supreme Court judgment, five years hence, you were asked to take the credit, department to another, oh, Jay, Mina, oh, yes, sir, I'll give you the credit. And therefore, the VRM media is take the credit, reverse it. Take in particular one, reverse it, but after reversal, please keep it somewhere in the account, financial account, as receivable. Because Supreme Court nowadays takes 10 years to decide. So, kitna bhi bolo, the sir baat mein wahan kuman baitha hoga, wo aamko bhi nahi maalo na. Ambi kitne hoonge ho bhi nahi maalo. Accounts mein sab rahe ga. Accounts mein sab rahe ga. So that's the way you have planned. And then both circular now that if you have taken a credit once and reverse it, then subsequent credit you can take any time you like. So wo receivable rahe ga ta. Every time auditor will keep on asking you, yeh receivable kya hai, receivable kya hai. Ek baar write out karke rakh diya. तो तो किसी को मालूम ही नहीं पड़ने आ रहा उसमें क्रेडिट है नहीं है क्या होने वाला है क्या ऐसा सो दैट्स द वे ये सेकेंड लेवलमेंट हैज टू बी हेल्प सीएनएफ एजेंट कमीशन वाज ओनली गिवन बेसिकली बिकॉज़ द नेचर ऑफ सर्विस व्हिच इज गिवन इन द कैडिला हेल्थ केयर इज एंटायरली डिफरेंट देन व्हाट इज सीएनएफ एजेंट एंड हेंस द रूल विल नॉट अप्लाई टू दैट other than non gujarat uh, jurisdiction sir i oh, well i would i said that has still not been argued showing the income tax credit so once we argue that possibly the credit will be allowed debit factor has been allowing that credit in spite of kerala uh, health also interesting because you have contrary judgment of the other high court ambika and others delhi high court also the rule is if a, if there is a high court judgment and there is no contrary judgment, then that will apply to all over India. But if there are contrary judgment, then travelers can choose whatever they 
want to choose and because it is more circular also. So you will have easily available to have credit. Do not ask the client to have level much credit. Father time to look at it, but now what credit I have to have to have to have to have to be improved. That's the second one. Yes. That they can curtail the right any time they like. 
and that is the reason why six months will apply for the earlier period. It is not that if, but for this restriction, we have been taking credit after two years, three years, there is no, there is no problem. It is allowable high court judgment which says in absence of a time frame, you will definitely uh, get the credit. So therefore, there, there will be a lot of difficulty. In fact, you will not get the credit if you take it now. Friends, such provisions, I will go step further now. Babu's keep on making. In 1995, we saw that in 1999, they withdrew it. And I am sure, because these are very difficult to implement. Very difficult to implement. There are so many conditions, uh, situations where it is just not possible to take six months' time. Sooner or later, this will be withdrawn. Maybe one year, two years, and all that. At that point, you can take all the credit. <laughs> you got my point? <coughs> Today, if you take it, you will get Shopal's notice and only remedy will be in Supreme Court because tribunal law will follow Supreme Court Osaram and will reject your appeal. But once this is withdrawn, then you will definitely, that day you take the credit, part in receivable account to be taken, then, then there will be no difficulty because that day you will have your rights again brought back. What was curtailed is again now given back to you. Therefore, there will be no problem at that point. And hence, you know, we were in our client to we were every time telling, oh, don't forget about the eligibility non-eligibility. 31st August, the people have Jobi credit, they have to take the eligibility non-eligibility. 31st August, you take every credit which you want. Somebody will come and non-eligibility, people, all right, you take the non-eligibility. But don't dispute that at this point. That's the issue in this. And this curtailment of right in many places you find. This is the Yosaran Sudhya which is given.